Hey everyone, so today we're going to be doing a chain lightning demo. And real quick, I just wanted to kind of say thanks to everyone who's been checking out Abel, uh, especially during this week-long sale. The sale was meant as kind of a thank you for people who voted for Abel uh, in the uh, March uh, community interest poll. Abel got second place, which is really awesome, and I didn't really expect that, especially considering there was such great competition. But uh, yeah, so thanks for voting. Uh, the sale is for you guys. Like that's. It took me a little longer to get set up than I would like, but you know now it's done and it's out there. So I hope you enjoy it. And the example today came. I'm gonna do basically two or three things. So Warlocks here had a really good question where he wanted to see how to attach a particle to a socket, which is really simple. So I'll show that. And then we have Archimodes. And Archimodes, man. He says he's been a programmer for 11 years, and I kind of believe it because the social skills are a little lacking. Like, we need to work on your constructive criticism, Mark Motors, because you had some good ideas. You had some really good feedback. You just wrapped it in this really spiky wrapper, kind of like a sea urchin. So, like, uh, but, you know, you had some good points. And the whole, like, uh, he had two main issues. One was he wanted better documentation particularly around it seemed like uh, context targets, which I'm gonna go over because I haven't done that in a video yet. And then he wanted a, an example like chain lightning, which is a good example. So we're gonna do that. So let's go ahead real quick and just kind of go over what context targets are because they're super important in Able. So context targets are targets that are based in the context of the ability you're, you're executing. So think of them as targets that change based on who's executing the ability, why they're executing the ability, who they're targeting, things like that. It's kind of a generic way to target people uh, without having to write any hard code. So there's there's five currently, uh, and camera's a new one, but and there may be more, but these are the five currently. So self, self is the actor that is actually executing the ability, so if I launch a fireball, self is me, yeah, because I'm the one actually playing the ability, I'm the one executing it. Uh, instigator is the one who caused the fireball or who caused an action to occur, an ability to occur. So generally this happens if you have like a trap system. Uh, the instigator could be the player that, set up, that stepped on the trap where the actual like trap uh, object would be the self in that case. And then owner is just who you want. It's just kind of a generic gameplay concept, right? So if I summon a golem, uh, my owner is whoever summoned me. Now my golem may be casting spells or doing attacks, but I'll probably want to go back and get my owner's stats when I'm calculating damage and things like that. So that's just a way for you to kind of get chain your way back up and get who originally casted the spell. Uh, target actor, despite being singular, uh, is generally plural. It's target actors. Uh, this is anyone who's targeting who you mark as a target and you can do you can set a target through either the targeting logic in able or through queries uh, collision tasks things like that you can actually add targets dynamically and so when you call target actor you may get one thing you may get multiple actors it just depends on kind of how you have it set up and I'll, I'll show you that uh, today a little bit and then camera was specifically added for first-person shooters uh, because they kind of need to, you know, shoot towards a camera. So that's just the uh, the camera to player uh, transform. So that's just an easy way for you to get where the player person is looking in a first-person shooter. So let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to do our chain lightning. So. Before I actually show you it, I kind of want to show you the logic behind it because that's when ever people are starting programming, uh, a lot of times teachers will say, you know, don't worry about the code. Think about how you're going to solve the problem and then you can kind of get in the nitty gritty because once you actually kind of wrap your head around how to solve the problem, solving it uh, in terms of like writing the code, uh, creating the assets, things like that, 
is much simpler because you kind of have a game plan in your head and you can kind of figure out how things are going to flow. So we're going to do that here. So we're basically going to divide our chain lightning into two steps, right? We're going to have one step where our character uh, is going to cast a lightning bolt against an enemy. And then a second step where that enemy is then going to search out for other enemies and cast lightning on them. And then the, the process repeats itself, right? So then this guy would search for our enemies uh, and cast lightning. And they're all going to mark each other as, as being electrocuted when they get hit so that we're not pinging back and forth. Although if you wanted that, you certainly could set it up. So let's look at kind of the meat of the project, which is uh, a passive ability. I just called it shock passive. Uh, and this is going to be, well, let me show you the actual ability and then we'll go over it. So here's our guy. He's going to cast lightning and you can see it just finds everyone and shoots it. And for Will Rock, if, if you can see like there's particles on my hands. So unfortunately when I do these, I have to own all the assets so I can give it out freely. So there's... You may notice the lack of animation. That's because I'm a terrible animator and terrible artist in general. So, uh, but you know, hopefully it's the point across. So, and I'll show you how I set that up. But you can see the lightning kind of bounces around, right? It goes to each one and it spreads and things are just kind of flying. So let's, 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 uh, I guess we'll start at the front. We'll start at the actual cast. So here is our actual like chain lightning cast. And unfortunately you can't see the beam effect because I don't have a beam target, uh, which is something I actually added for this. I actually added the ability to dynamically set your beam target, which is something I'll put in the next update. It still needs a little cleanup, but it works. Uh, so for this case, let me turn on my collision query so you can see what's happening. I basically have this cone in front of me. Uh, because I want, I don't want to target anything behind me. That just didn't seem right, right? So I have a cone. So I've set up this ability to require targeting, meaning I have to have a target for it to actually activate. I have a cone. Uh, my FOV I left at 90 degrees. I set it to five meters in front of me. Height I'm ignoring in this case because I didn't really care. Uh, if, if I wanted to make it height based, you could just turn off 2D here and it would take into account this. Uh, my collision uh, layer I just set to pawn, which is pretty normal. And then I set my filters down here, uh, which if you've seen any of my other videos, this is kind of simple. This is basic flow, like for a target ability, is set my target, set the kind of collision volume or, uh, uh, yeah, just the geography, or the, <laughs> not the geography, but the geometry that I want to use. Uh, and then set up some rules, right? So in this case, my two rules are I only want some target mannequins, which are the things I know I'm going to be shooting. Now, this could just be a generic actor if you wanted to. And then I set my max target to one, meaning I only want one. I only want to hit one. So just find me one target to shoot because then it's going to spread out. I don't actually want to do like kind of a web effect from the start, although you could. Like if I set this to three, then it would find first three uh, enemies it found and do a lighting effect on each. So that's all I have set up here. And then I have basically a bunch of play particle effects and a play ability, which is kind of where the magic happens. So for play particle, I have a spark and this is my, so I guess these two are my, uh, my hand sparks basically. So they're those guys. You can see down here, right? So you can see I just have it pointed to a spark template. I have my socket specified, which is hand L, and then the other one's hand R. And then I just have, there's an option here called attach to socket. So that's it. So for, uh, I think his name was Ulrich, like attaching an ability or attaching a particle to a, a socket is really, really simple. You know, you just specify the socket, attach it, if you want it to update continually. Uh, and you can use the rotation, you can set offsets as well. 
and I have it closing up on end because I think this by default is an infinite effect. So, and I wanted it to end when my when I'm done casting, so to speak. Uh, and then I have a actual. Uh, should have oh I didn't set that for that so I can get rid of this this is actually useless and I'll show you why in a second and then I actually have a playability that uses my passive which is actually going to do the search and spread and then I make sure to pass in my owner and myself as the instigator so again I'm setting my owner as whoever the owner would be for whatever this ability is generally it's probably going to be yourself and then the instigator I'm setting myself, and I'll show you why that's important. And then I'm targeting uh, the actors I've found over here. So that's that's all this is. So this is pretty simple, right? This is playing two particle effects along with basically casting an ability on my targets that I found over here, you know, using this logic. So let's go look at the second part, which is the passive. So this one's a little more fancy. So if I play this, you can see it's kind of doing three sphere-based queries and then ending. So let's actually kind of, I'll show you what's how it's set up here and then we'll go look at the blueprint because this does require a little bit of custom blueprint, but not too much, not as much as you may think at least. So you can see this ability I have set to loop three times. That's because I want it to kind of splinter out up to three times if it can. Uh, so I basically have a collision query that I do right at the start. That's just a sphere. I have it set to 4.5 meters. So and I believe that's it. Yes, well, so I also have it set to fire event. And this is super important. You'll actually see why. And I'm passing it this event called spread lightning which I'm not actually using, but uh, it's good to name things anyway. And then I have two filters. Uh, and remember, these are filters that are gonna be executed on the targets it finds in its uh, query. So one is a custom filter, which means it's gonna go into blueprints and let me run a bunch of custom logic uh, to decide whether or not I want to keep a potential target. And I also have it filtering out itself. And the reason I have it filtering out itself is because if a dummy runs this, if one of my target dummies runs it, I don't want it to shock itself. It's already been shocked at that point. And so this was just kind of a simple way for me to guarantee that I'm not gonna cast the ability on myself again. So then we also have where I'm setting a tag, just a simple gameplay tag called character.shocked on my guy while, they're, while they have this ability running. So this is basically saying, hey, this person's already been hit by this ability, and for the duration of it, as long as they're actually like being shocked, uh, this tag will stay on. And then I have it the option set to remove it on end, so it'll automatically get yanked off at the end. Uh, I have it playing a particle effect, which is lightning. And unfortunately, like this is the part that's gonna change. So I actually have it uh, set up to uh, dynamically update the beams target and source actors using the context target. So I have it using uh, the instigator as the source and self as the target. So if you remember, the instigator is the person who put this on us. So we're always going to have basically a lightning uh, effect basically going back to who cast it on us and ending up at us. So as we go out, uh, our, lightning, our lightning will just branch naturally. So, and this is gonna change. Uh, this is the stuff that needs to clean up, so don't pay too much attention. Just realize this is where that instigator came in. If you remember, in our previous ability, uh, let me change it. In our previous thing, we set our inst the instigator as ourself, right? So that means this person's gonna be set as the instigator for this ability. And our particle will just chain along. And then finally we have an apply damage, uh, which just does a flat amount. 
I have a video out showing dynamic damage if you want to do dynamic calculations. It's no big deal. Uh, and then I have it damaging the cell. Because again, this is the person, this ability is going to run on the person that's being shocked. So let's go ahead and look at our blueprint. So there's two things. So let's look at our, our custom filter condition. So if you remember, if I go back to my collision query, I set one of our filters to custom. And I passed in an event name called check targets. Then if I go in here and I actually override my custom filter condition, I can, I'll get in the actor, the context, and the event name, which in this case would be uh, check targets. And I can decide, hey, do I want this target or not? And so you can see here, I basically have a comment that says, we only want target dummies who aren't shocked. So we take our actor, cast them to a target dummy, and then we say, hey, target dummy, do you have a tag called shocked? If not, then you're a valid target. Otherwise, no, I don't want you because you've already been shocked or you're not a target dummy. So this is pretty simple. Uh, and again, you can create your own filter conditions. You can create multiple ones. Uh, you would just switch off the name here. Uh, but so again, just the flow. We're going to do our collision query. It's going to find a bunch of in, uh, actors. And then for every actor, it's going to call this custom filter. We're just going to go in here and say, hey, cast to a target mannequin. Do you have this, this tag? If not, then you're a valid target. Otherwise, it tosses the result away because it says, oh, I, I don't, I'm not going to do anything with you. So it throws it away. And then the next thing is, and so this will get executed before the next event. So if you remember, we also set an event here called spread lightning, which is our collision query. So our collision query is actually going to run this query, find all the actors, run the filters, including our custom check, and then call this fire event or call this event uh, and pass in this event name called spread lightning, which basically means we're going to have this on collision event, which again is a method you can override here. So you can see there's a bunch of methods you can use to kind of alter things uh, based on whatever rules you have in your game or whatever logic you want to create for an ability. So you can see I've overridden on collision event, uh, which passes in the ability context, the, bit, the event name, which in, in this case would be spread lightning. And again, I'm not doing anything with this because I only have one of these. But if I had multiple, I would use this to figure out what logic I need to, you know, basically what collision event is occurring. And then it passes in an array of our entities. So I basically just loop through all those entities. Uh, I know we filtered only the target mannequins. So I basically break out the result, grab the actor and cast it to a target mannequin because mannequin, I'm basically going to need to execute an ability on these guys. Uh, and again, my filter set up earlier, make sure that this will pass. Uh, although if I wanted to be safe, I could say, hey, if for whatever reason we got a bad result, just exit. Uh, and then I basically call activate ability on our target and pass it in this ability, which is shock passive. And I pass in the owner and I pass in the, uh, I pass in the owner of the original ability as the owner, and I pass in this self, which is this target dummy, not the one that we're about to cast on, as the instigator, and then call activate. So it can be a little bit confusing to wrap your head around, but it's really not that bad, right? So I have a collision vent. I'm going to loop through my entries, break it out, cast my actor to a target mannequin, because again, I, that's all I wanted, and then I'm going to basically spawn this ability on them and pass along the information. So those two things gets us this result. And you can see the sphere is going off there. So let me turn that off. There's a command for that, but it's just easier for me to use that. So you can see it jumps. 
Now, if, if I went here and I just went, because again, Able is all data driven, right? So if I set this to uh, 300, so three meters, right? You can see it doesn't actually go all the way up because these guys are just far enough apart that I can't reach them. So let me put that back. So that's, that's pretty much it. Let me see, because I'll actually try and do, uh, let me find, Oh, we could break it out. Let's say each one's gonna do five. Probably won't get much difference. Yeah, because they, they're all tied to each other. Uh, but yeah, again, really simple kind of flow. Uh, I'll be making this available so you can check it out yourself. You know, one of the things I like about answering these things and doing these things for, uh, for you guys is not only does it help you out, but it helps me kind of come up with features and stuff I didn't think of. Uh, so, and this was a good reason for me to go back and look at beam particle support because that's, I always wanted to do that, but I just kind of ran out of time on the initial submission. So it's been nice to kind of be able to go back and do it. So again, this will be out free. Uh, thanks for everyone for watching. Thanks for uh, all your support on the sale. And again, if you have any questions, don't, you know, don't hesitate to reach out on the forums, email me. Uh, I love all the feedback I can get. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.